Um, I'm actually going to speak about the last character. Uh, and to be honest, personally, I feel like this is a bit of a random character, right? Uh, so I think we've heard the different main characters in the story of the crucifixion, right? From starting from, you know, we had Peter, we had um, Pilate, we had all these different different characters. Some good, some bad, some with good intentions but made bad choices, some with bad intentions and bad choices, right? Some with good intentions and good choices. But to be honest, uh, the centurion, right? Uh, and I'm going to talk a bit about his confession that he makes. Um, like I said, I feel like he was a bit of a random character because here's this guy who was just attending the body of Jesus, right? He's making sure that obviously this body dies, that you know, nothing else happens, and he has to look after this, right? Uh, but he makes one of the most profound statements, I think, in this story. And I think that comes from a place of where his heart was and what he encountered and experienced. So I'm just going to read uh, the verses there. In Luke chapter 23, verse 44 to 49, it says, Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness all over the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. When Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together to that side, seeing what had, had, had been done, beat their breasts and returned. All right, these words he said, Certainly, this was a righteous man. Right? See, to me, at first glance, it didn't make sense. Right? What about this whole situation made him suddenly make this confession? I'm sure he would have overlooked a thousand crucifixions in his lifetime. I'm sure to him this was just another man. I mean, here was no noble hero, or at least in his eyes, this was not some war hero or some kind of guy who, again, in his eyes had done anything significant. He was a man who was dead, who was lying, or dying, who was lying on a cross, right? What about that situation made him say, you know what, I'm going to glorify God through this. There is something here that has touched my heart and has moved me so deeply that I'm going to make an exclamation that glorifies God. And I think that comes from when he saw Jesus. Uh, the word glorify comes from the Greek word, I'm, I'm going to butcher this, <laughs> doxazo, right? Basically, it says to ascribe weight by recognizing the substance, right? When he looked at Jesus, something took place in his heart. And that, I believe, was conviction. I believe he was touched with conviction. He realized I am a broken, sinful human being who needs a savior. And there is a man lying, hanging on this cross who can give me that. There is someone on this cross who can give me eternal life. He saw the weight and he saw the glory in that moment. Right, church? Here was a moment that the so-called Pharisees, scribes, people who taught the law all their life missed. And something the Lord was showing me was, we are in a moment in history, as someone had tweeted, uh, online, he said, I believe we are reading the books of the next, uh, we, are reading, we are in the chapters of the next history books, and the question is, I don't know if the story ends well, right? As a nation, we are in the chapters of the next history books. Does it end well? And I think that's on us. But let us not miss an opportunity that God is doing something. Like the Pharisees, let us not miss a God opportunity. Um... And again, I'm bringing this back to the nation because as I, as I was reading this, something the Lord was showing me was, see, we are in a season where revival, transformation, reformation is not a desire anymore. It's a need. It's a necessity. I think for the longest time, we've preached about revival, we've spoken about it, we've talked about change, we've talked about transformation, right? And today there are people, thousands of people on the streets all over who are starving, who are hungry, who are out there, right? But I don't think even if the government changes, we will get a solution, right? Because the solution, again, that man looks for will come from a broken system. The solution has to come from Jesus. It has to come from true conviction and transformation. And that only takes place when people see Jesus. That only takes place when people's hearts are so cut up. And I think as a church, we have gotten so blinded or so deafened by religiosity. We come to church, we do the things, we know what to say. We know what to do. And to be honest, personally, I know what to say and what to do. I've been in this for the longest time. 
if someone comes and starts talking to me or something, I can tell them all the right things. Is my heart in it? Probably not. And I know that as well. But I know when I see Jesus, when I have an encounter with him, my heart changes. Church, how many of you have been there? When you encounter Jesus for really for who he is, when you begin to see him really for who he is, your heart begins to change. It does something in your heart. It brings up some ugly stuff inside. And you begin to realize, I am weak, I am broken, but here is a righteous man. I need him. And I'm going to ask, I'm just going to pray for us, right? And I'm going to move on. Um, but if you join me, right? And if you are saying, God, I want to partner with you in this season. God, I want to partner with what you're doing here in this nation. I think it comes from us saying, God, I want to see you. Jesus, I need an encounter with you. I need a God encounter. Not more knowledge, not more ideas, not good facts. God, we need a God encounter, right? So church, would you just join me? Uh, can I ask you, if you could uh, stand up where you are and... If this is you are saying, you know what, I want to partner with what God is doing. Can I ask you to put your hand on your heart right now and would you stand up? Jesus, right now, I just pray for, I just pray for an encounter with you wherever we are. God, I pray that we would begin to see you. As, as it was preached, let us look into those beautiful eyes, no matter how far we walked away from God, no matter how spiritually dead we've become. God, I pray, let us see those eyes. Those eyes would waken something in our souls today, Father. I pray, Lord, that as we are here, that we would see you. God, that we would encounter you, and that encounter would change and transform our life. Lord, not a moment that happened 20, 30 years ago, not a moment that happened 5, 10 years ago, but I pray for today. God, we need you for today. Like this centurion, Father, let us not miss what you are doing. And as the centurion saw what happened and his heart was so cut up and he declared, I pray our life would be a declaration of the glory of God. I pray as we step out onto these streets where there is so much brokenness, there is so much need, I pray our lives would glorify Jesus. But Father, I pray that our hearts would change right now. Holy Spirit, right now move over this church. Move over our hearts. Church, I believe God is bringing conviction, a spirit of conviction right now over some of you. As some of the greatest moves of God started when men and women were brought to their knees in conviction saying, God, we need you. And if you are uncomfortable saying, you know what, I don't want to see my sin. I don't want to look at how broken I am. Then I suggest you sit down and you maybe even walk away from this. Because if you want true transformation, it takes place in us, God, opening our eyes to ourselves and realizing we can't do this. And I believe right now, God may be bringing up some stuff in your life, things that make you feel uncomfortable about yourself. Maybe situations, maybe relationships, maybe things that you're in right now that the Lord does not want you to be a part of. But if you ask him, say, God, would you change my heart? I can't change my desires. I can't change my heart for these things. Maybe I love the world too much. Maybe I love these things too much. I can't change it. But God, I pray an encounter with you would change and transform my heart right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.